Hi, Alexandra Buchuk, and I am with Ricky Rassor. He's my lawyer. We're closing today on my property that is clo that is uh, that was for sale, and I wanted to ask Ricky on his opinion on what's going on the market and what is his review of uh, buyer seller market. What's happening here? So, from our law, law office perspective, Alex, uh, we're seeing even more closings happen in October, November, and we're full in December as well. When you compare it to last year, it was a little bit different. Um, a lot of people will ask me in my capacity as a lawyer, what's happening with the market? Is a buyer's market, seller's market, are deals not closing? The overwhelming majority of the transactions are closing. You do have the one-off here and there where the financing falls through or something crazy happens, but even those transactions we're usually able to salvage by getting secondary financing or a private mortgage. We're able to come up with creative and innovative ideas to make things happen. But as far as the market is concerned, and as an owner of property, I've been reviewing the numbers and statistics. From what I understand, last month we had 2.6 months of uh, inventory. And from what I know, that is by all means a seller's market. So there's a perception in the marketplace that values are going to go down. But if you ask me, if you think things are expensive now, just wait. And I think spring market will show again, right? Yeah, yeah, we're seeing a lot of the numbers roll what over. I'm, what I'm thinking, mm -hmm. uh, fall, fall, we are going into the winter market. Winter mm -hmm. market usually slows down. So, mm -hmm. But this mm -hmm. is like statistically mm -hmm. usual chart mm -hmm. of the winter market, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Comes spring. And again, mm -hmm. we will have most likely one more raise mm -hmm. in interest mm -hmm. rates. Mm -hmm. Definitely it impacted and slowed down the market, right? Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. It's not going up that crazy. Mm -hmm. But... Um, <laughs> If people are wanting to delay purchase, yeah, you can try to, mm -hmm. uh, but come spring, most likely, we will again see. Well, I, I think that's a, that's a valid point. It's a good one, but there's a couple of things to look at. So first off, uh, a lot of people are trying to close their transactions in early January to avoid the rate increase. Many people have got pre-qualifications or pre-approvals. And so many of my clients are like, Ricky, are you available for a closing on January 2nd or January 3rd? Because if I don't close by the first week of January, I lose my rate, which is a very valid concern. Um, I think from my perspective, one lender to look out for is Scotiabank, it's more specifically. Although the rates are going up, I think what you're going to find over time is that many of these banks that have huge bottom lines and mortgages, and they have shareholders and stakeholders that they report to, the numbers, if they start going down, won't look good. So I think you're going to see some more competitive rate cutting between the major institutions, mm -hmm. and that's going to spur further confidence in the consumer. I think we had a lot of funny situations arise out of you know our three amigos going in front of the podium and coming up with the 16-point plan in Ontario, but we're seeing a lot of things climbing back now too. We've, we've seen press releases now where rent control won't apply to uh, new developments, so that's very interesting. Um, and it should kickstart a lot of things that are, that are not currently in full-fledged now, and I think it's only going to get better. So again, if you think things are expensive now, you just wait. Yeah, thank you so much, Ricky. No worries, anytime, Alex.